On today's show, the Dallas Mavericks lose their second game of the season to the Suns. Couldn't get in a rhythm, couldn't get anything going. But what was the real reason why the Mavs lost this game? We'll talk about that and more today. It's Lockdown Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Lockdown Mavericks Podcast. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. You are Locked On Mavs. Great, Rusty. Your daily Dallas Mavericks podcast. No one's dying. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Amazing. Your team every day. Still can't even build that part's still true. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being an everydayer and making Locked On Mavs your first listen today. Subscribe for our free Locked On Mavs newsletter, your one stop for the best news and analysis on the Dallas Mavericks and the NBA straight to your inbox every day. Click the link or uh, scan the QR code on the screen. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, visit FanDuel.com to get started. And joining me, the post-game prodigy, the sad son. <laughs> Mavs are 0-1 when he's not sitting courtside. What you got for me, Sally? That's right. Nice. Hey, that's, that's, that should be the main takeaway we have, the honestly. Ma- the, ma- the magic is over. <laughs> but, uh, man, that, that was just a frustrating game just through and through late start time it starts 15 16 17 minutes past the scheduled start time um uh, oh, just a gross game that was the most disgusting dallas mavericks game i've seen in a, in a long time and we're gonna so get into it we'll, we'll talk about clay thompson he was actually good again that, that's a positive we can take luca dropped 40 we can talk about that positive uh we can talk about those kind of things but let's start here slightly the mavs lose 102 to 114 to the Phoenix Suns. We've been touting this Mavs offense as being one of the best in the NBA this season. And we get to see this. But I'm going to take this all a step further. What a disgusting, disgusting evening for Dallas Mavericks fans. To view this game, to see what it was, to see how little rhythm the Mavs could get into between the referees calling so many things. And I think that there was egregious things on, on both sides of this, but... The Mavs got called for 28 fouls. Suns got called for 17. Uh, Suns took 37 free throws in this game. So the rhythm of this game was completely off. Uh, Nobody except for Luka, Kyrie, and Clay could really hit a shot in this game, it felt like. Uh, You take that a step further, and lots of Mavericks fans couldn't figure out how to watch this game because it was the first game on local. Now, many, many Mavericks fans figured it out and got on KFAA, got on uh, Mavs TV. They both worked for me. I I could figure it out. But just (laughs) and then the late start where you're waiting until 9 p.m. local time to get this game started. Like this was just a disgusting overall performance. And I think from from everyone involved, really. (laughs) Yeah, I can tell. I'm a little cranky. It seems like everyone on Twitter is a little cranky. Like that's just, it's just one of those. Like I went through all of that for that. Like, like that's the thing. It's, it's like as as a loss, we'll get into it. I don't think there's a lot of, like uber negative things that it's like, oh my god, this this kind of changes how I look at this team. I I don't think there's a single thing like that from this game. To be honest with you, I think it's just one of those games that you chalk up. Uh, but I'll just say say this, and I I want to go on a little teeny tiny rant here from a basketball fan's perspective. That is garbage, man. Yeah, Nobody you can't wants do this. no one wants games like this. Nobody. We tell you this all the time. Ratings in the regular season are in the gutter. They're going down because people do not like viewing games like this. It's not fun. The Raptors and Sixers had a game like this last night where it was just stoppage after stoppage after stoppage. Nobody wants to watch this. And I'm not getting on here. I want to because I tweeted something like this and people misinterpreted as me saying the Mavs lost because the refs. That's not what I'm saying at all. The Mavs were no. terrible tonight. Like that's yeah. not what I'm saying. And I think there were some calls in this game that when he gets the Suns, there was a they stopped the game to review a, a Yusuf Nurkic elbow to Gafford's face. That was just the, the most common basketball play you'll ever see. Like yeah. nobody wants this. And I've been longer the belief where it's like, you know what? I would rather you guys miss calls here and there because you're going to miss them anyway. Cause I thought that yeah. they overturned that Nurkic one was terrible. But anyways, uh, that, that won the Mavs or the Suns challenge in the last two minutes of the game. That's a foul at 10 times out of 10. I feel like, and I don't know how they overturned that, but anyways, um, I would rather you guys miss some and we take 10 seconds on the review rather than we're sitting there for three to four minutes in stoppages and then timeouts were in stoppages. And then there's no, this game had no flow ever, ever. We were averaging over a foul a minute for like most of this game. And it was just hard to view just from a basketball fan's perspective. Well, what do we finish? We finished with 46 fouls. So we almost did get the, the, the foul a minute. Between the yeah. two, 28 for the Mavs and 17 for the for the Suns. And that was the thing for the Mavericks. They couldn't get into a rhythm. They, they started this game. The Suns were on a second night of a back-to-back. 
KD had played a bunch of minutes. I sent the, the Lockdown Maps insiders. I texted them a couple times today, like, hey, Bradley Beal's not going to play in this game. KD's played a bunch of minutes. He's 36. They've used him at the five. He can't keep this up. And they played him 39 minutes again. So I'm, I'm watching that war of attrition for the, for the Suns this season because th that is not sustainable. But apparently in this game, it worked. So, second night of a travel back-to-back -back for the Suns. And the Mavs came in. We're like, all right, we want to be physical. We're the big bruising team. We got gas. We got PJ. We got Luca as a big, you know, bruising guard. They wanted to come in and play physical, and the refs were like, "No, you're not. You're not going to do that. Today. Like, you're not going to play that today." And so then that got taken away. So then they had to change the way that they defended. And the Suns did a good job of taking away the Mavs pick and roll and the Mavs lobs at at the rim. And I thought they, you know, used the drop coverage with with you know Nurkic when somebody comes up and sets a screen. Nurkic runs up and then he drops back a little bit and that took away the lobs, which I thought was something that, that took the Mavs out of the rhythm there too. But then when the Mavs tried to like space the floor, kid finally went with the, the maxi at the five lineup. We got to see that Mavs space the floor. And then Nurkic was able to just like back down and walk to the rim because the Mavs couldn't be physical anymore. If they ever came in yeah. and swiped, swiped down on him, they'd get called for a foul. So it was just this, like, you can't find a rhythm. And then the missed opportunities for the Mavericks too. I mean, we'll, we'll go through them and talk about them, but how many missed layups, how many missed open threes, how, Clay missed the, the patented take the one dribble. He was wide open three, like, you know, Kyrie missed multiple, just wide open mid range jumpers that he just normally hits. And so it just was, again, like you said, it was one of those games where just up everything that could have gone bad in that, in that route, in that direction went, went bad. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, I was saying this on my stream, I was watching the game is it's like, it's a sign of a good basketball team that you're not losing by 20 points right now. Cause this feels like it could have easily slipped into blowout territory at any point. And the final sure. score is kind of in blowout territory, but the Mavs were like connected, connected, connected. But I was saying when it felt like the, you know, the Mavs got down to six, I think, uh, I mean, they got down to one, like they were well within striking distance multiple times. Yeah. But like halfway through the fourth quarter, this kind of got pretty juicy and interesting. Got down to six. Juice. I was thinking, man, this would be like a, you would really solidify yourself as a great, great team if you somehow managed to pull this one out of just <laughs> thin air because they did not play winning basketball at any point in this game. And then, well, they didn't win the game. So <laughs> You could just like, end there. No they didn't play they, winning basketball at any point. Because sometimes, sometimes you lose a game and it's like, man, we, we played well. Like we, we did some stuff right and just some things didn't go yeah. our way. It is what it is. But at, at no point in this game for the Mavs was it like, oh, they're, they're doing like – they got clean looks offensively, which is what you want. You know, similar to the first half against the Spurs, where it was like, yeah, their shooting numbers are terrible, but they're getting good looks, and it'll all it'll even itself out. And then they went crazy in the second half. This game was similar, but it just never, it never really clicked. No, it never did. And the Mavs' offense never really got you know their like their rhythm going. Like I said, they never really figured it out. They, in the second quarter, I felt like they had at least some of that. They were hitting some of their threes. They went six of eleven from three, kind of caught back up. It looked like the story of the game was going to be just a three point differential. Like like you said, the Suns were just d down in threes, and part of that was because the Mavs defense was all over the place. I mean, we we got to see the Luca Kyrie, you know, Clay backcourt defense try and defend a Tyus Jones, you know, uh, Devin Booker backcourt where they're just they're moving all over the place and somebody's got to guard somebody so then they're fighting like clay is fighting over screens all night and Kyrie's having to to you know to face up and guard and like there's just not really a place to hide either of those guys which we were were wary about going into this but the, the Mavs led a bunch of open threes in this game because of miscommunications on rotations and the Mavs defense it it's going to take some time there's a bunch of new guys on this team it's going to take some time to figure out how to, to rotate it seems like they don't want to switch with gafford but they do want to switch with lively which is like a different thing too they've got to go back and forth between that and so the maps defense just was not you know good enough in a game in a game where they don't have the offense and their offense isn't like humming the way their defense wasn't good enough because their defense would would have won a game like this last year Right. You just win this like knockout drag, drag down deep like game where all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's 102 to 10, you know, 102 to 100 <laughs> at the end yeah. of a game like this. But their defense wasn't good enough in order to do that. And credit the Suns. They made up just a bunch of shots. Felt like every time there was an open shot, Suns made it an open shot. And Mavs missed it. Yeah, I thought the Mavs defense did much better in the second half. Uh, their transition defense, they gave up way too many opportunities. Yeah, that were just like did. inexcusable. Uh, and I did, that's just a symptom. I don't think they came out with the right intensity out of the gates. And I have think some the, of that has, have you seen the fast break points for each team? I know it's bad, isn't it? How bad do you think it is? Well, I'm, I, I don't have it. I know that the, I, know, I, I want you to guess. <laughs> I don't know. I'm bad at guessing. I know the sun's 
transition offense is very good. I'm looking at the cleaning the glass numbers. Suns did not get a Suns actually didn't get as many as I thought, but it was four to eighteen. Mavs got four. Suns got eighteen. Yeah, that that sounds right to me. It was just a disjointed the, game for the Mavs. I, mean, I don't know. I, I just I don't know what happened. It just did not feel like a Dallas Mavericks basketball game. Very disjointed. Bunch of of you know a bunch of the reason why they lost this game is because they just couldn't get in a rhythm for multiple different reasons. The refs calling this game completely different than the ref crew that called it, you know, the first game against the Spurs. Mavs missed a bunch of opportunities and missed shots. Spur the Suns took things away. Mavs have to really re have to adjust and have to change up some things. So coming up, let's talk about some of those things that we saw in this game. We'll talk about some of the reasons why the Mavs struggled in this one and uh, things that they can do better. We'll talk about that and more coming up. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Today's episode of Lockdown Maps brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook has all kinds of props and odds, things that you can use to get in on the action, see what is available. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel. It's America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check the latest stats, live play-by-play, -play, so much more in the same pl place where you place your bets. Same place where you place your bets. Place those bets in that place, and then you'll be placed those bets. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. You can get $150 in bonus bets with your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. I need a recovery beer. I need a recovery beer. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us on the Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate each and every one of you for checking out the show. If you have not yet subscribed to the Lockdown Maps newsletter, I have been told that the Lockdown Kings podcast, the Sacramento Kings, the, the Lockdown podcast covers the Sacramento Kings, have the most subscriptions. And by Monday, we want to have lapped them. So just subscribe. It's completely free. Go to Lockdown Daily or, or take a picture of the QR code or go to uh, LockedOnDaily.com and click the link in the description and you can uh, just subscribe to our newsletter. We need as many of you as possible to beat Matt George. Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Slightly, let's get back into this game. Um, Luca dropped 40. Luca could, could get anything he wanted, but it was one of those classic, yeah. they're taking away the pass from Luca, right? We've seen this. Going all the way back to the Clippers playoff series, right? Where teams, all right, Luca, we'll play the drop against you. We'll let you get your own shot. We'll let you go one on one against a rookie, Ryan Dunn. And then, you know, but you're not going to be able to, to kick out the shooters. We're going to stay home on everybody else. They're going to play drop covers. So you can't hit the lob, right? They didn't let him do anything else like that. And he finishes 40 points, 10 boards, only four assists in this game. And it, it he, he was the only one really giving him anything in this game. And it's, it is kind of nice to know when stuff's not going right for everybody else, it'll still go right for Luca because he's just that good. Yeah. Luca. I mean, this is why he's the best scorer in the league. Just rolls out of bed, 40 points. Like that's just what it <laughs> felt like. It, it didn't really feel at any point. It was like, well, Luca's going to get 40 tonight. And then it was like, he has 40, you know, that's just the type of score that he is. But yeah. I, I wouldn't even, it was a good Luca game. I wouldn't say it was a great Luca game because the great Luca games, usually, you know, 10, 11 assists. Some of that's not his fault. He had good kickouts to open shooters, yeah, but awesome. it was just a, again, a symptom of just, just weird disjointed offense from the Mavericks, just disjointed in general. I don't know. I, I, I try not to say this at the top because I really am just trying to take this out entirely where I say stuff like this, but God, it just didn't feel like they, I don't, it just didn't for the cliche. It just felt like they didn't want it as much as the Suns did. Like it, it just did from the get go. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't even mad at the refs. Like I feel like a game like yeah, this right. past, they would be tilted and on edge. Like they're just joking around, laughing at the refs. And I don't know. It was a, it was a weird, it felt like a preseason game at times. Devin Harris said this at the end of the broadcast, and I completely agree with him. If you had just watched this game, you didn't know any context going in. You just saw what you saw in front of you. You would think that the Mavs played the second night of a back-to-back -back and not the Suns. Yeah. The way that they were, the, the Suns were going after loose ball. And some of that was just the Mavs felt dejected at not getting the calls. And it kind of felt like the teams we've seen in the past where Mavs shots aren't going down, Mavs aren't getting the calls, they hang their head a little bit, they, you know, they check out from the game. And then Luca looks like he's checked out completely, and then just drops forty like drops forty points, right? But yeah, yeah, the, nobody else really felt like was was really in this. And then it felt like everybody's sphincter just like tightened up, like oh my god, are we? How are we going to win this game? Okay, I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to do anything bad. So nobody was was you know forcing stuff. Nobody was like taking. Didn't feel like anybody wanted to take shots. You know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's a tough one. I mean, it was just a. Uh... 
It was just a bad basketball game for the Mavericks. Their transition defense was bad. The rebounding was bad. This is a game where you're supposed to dominate inside the side. Like you're, you're supposed to have a size advantage here. And yeah, there, you could, we could sit here and say the officiating from the get go basically dictated that the Mavericks would not have a, phys, a physicality advantage in this game. But it, Lively and Gafford just, you could have told me they played zero minutes tonight and I would have believed you. Like they, they just mm. did not have an impact on this game really at all. And this is a game where they have to have an impact. Like those two had to be better tonight, full stop. Uh, and I think if those two are better, that gets things rolling for the Mavericks a little bit more, maybe offensively. Um, and you do have to credit the Suns for def- defensively taking away that they those did. lob threats and stuff like that. But those guys got to figure out ways to impact the game. And we've seen, like, we've seen Lively and Gafford do that. Like Gafford with his energy, with his hustle, getting rebounds, you know, getting, you know, getting the team hyped up and excited. We've seen Lively uh, with passing and shot blocking and stuff like that. Good defense on the perimeter. Just didn't really feel like we had too many of those moments tonight from those two. I mean, they each had four offensive rebounds. They each had at least three assists. So like they were doing some of those things, but yeah, you yeah, just didn't it, feel, you didn't, it didn't, you didn't, you didn't feel there. You know, you didn't feel the size in a way that, that we thought going into a game like this. Uh, it did I, not change how the Suns played at all. The Mavs had no, the Mavs yeah, had point. changed that's how a, they played. That's it. Yeah, the, the they didn't make the Suns adjust to to that size in any way. Um, except for they didn't really go to KD at the five that much. The Mavs actually went uber small at the end when Maxi yeah. went out with an injury. We'll talk about that in a second here, but. Yeah, the Mavs ended up going uber small to end this game because they just couldn't get any spacing going because of the way that the, the Suns were, were defending and the way the Mavs shots just weren't going down. The Mavs, normally it's fine if your shot's going down, but if it's not going down, then you got to adjust and change. So, all right, we talk about Luka. But Clay Thompson again, 33 minutes, 19 points. So 22 points in the first game, 19 in the second, hit five of 12 threes, missed that, that one wide open one we talked about with the, the Clay dribble. But another like good game from Clay. Like, all right, here we yeah. go. We're getting 19 points a game from Clay. Like, let's go. Had a couple of middies as well. And even yeah. his uh, five to start 12, the game. even his misses were a little encouraging. He had two that I, I don't know how they did not go in. Like they were halfway yeah. down and rimmed out. So that's how you can tell a shooter is, is you know, a good shooter and clicking and feeling good with it with a shot is even the misses are good misses. Sometimes you got to miss your makes. To make or miss league, I've heard. Yep. Miss your makes, make your misses. It all evens out. But yeah, that was one of the first plays of the game. I was excited seeing it. I, I tweeted very prematurely, <laughs> but I, I tweeted that, wow, the Mavs just scored on a Gafford to Clay Thompson handoff where Clay got the, you know, the handoff from Gafford and then turned the corner and then he get, and then they were playing drop. So Clay got a wide open mid range shot and he hit it. And it was one of the first plays of the game. And I go, man, the Mavs just scored without Kyrie or Luca even touching the ball. How many times did that happen at all last year? Right. And well, that was then, the only time it happened tonight. I was gonna say, and then that was the only time it really happened the rest of the rest of the game. Uh, there was another thing with Clay that I, I really liked was he hit another um, he hit another three off of an inbound in the third quarter, and at the, you know, the third quarter he hit a three. It was sixty to sixty six at that point. The Mavs were, were still holding on there, and then a minute later, literally a minute later, Mavs got another inbound play. Clay does the exact same thing, tries to come around that oh, screen, yeah. tries to go to that corner. He gets doubled, and then that's when Clay kicks it to Gafford, and then Gafford inside to Kyrie, who was under the rim, and got that layup right there, and it was a three-point game at that point. That was really cool to see, and that is, that is where we can see Clay's gravity start to, to matter for this Mavericks team, that they can do some other stuff because all of a sudden, teams are going to be ready for the wide-open Clay things. They're going to be able to, they'll have, the more film they have, the more they'll be able to scout Oh, they do this inbound thing because they did that same play the first game. Yeah. They're gonna they did it in that third quarter. They tried it two times in a row, and the second time the Suns were ready for it, and, but Clay got doubled, and so then they were able to take advantage in a different way. Yeah, and then that also shows Clay's you know probably a better playmaker than you might think or give him credit for a better passer, better connective playmaker. So he, he's good at making those reads and, and making the right pass. And it's just you know that was a, that was a nice play and a nice wrinkle for the Mavs. So you you'll you see right away how Clay is going to impact things offensively here. It's just we need to get – the other guys need to get going as well. Like, we can't have disasters from the other guys, which is what tonight was, basically. That was It was definitely a tough one. Uh, on Clay, zero free throw attempts. Kyrie, two, two free throw attempts. And I think, I think they were both – it was like an and one, and then it was like a tech. <laughs> so, like, not necessarily yeah. earned. Uh, Clay well, look, is not I, really a free throw – Clay's not really a free no. throw guy. Luca got got twelve, but are we concerned that Clay and Kyrie don't get any free throws? 
Well, I just think tonight in general, I mean, this goes back to me not blaming the refs. The Mavericks were not an aggressive basketball team tonight at all. Like they settled yeah. for mid-range jumpers. Uh, you know, they, they had good looks at jumpers that they just missed, but they were not an aggressive basketball team. And like I said, they had a physicality advantage in this matchup, a size advantage in this matchup, and you didn't feel it at all. And part of that is on maybe the, the officiating, but another part is that the Mavericks just did not, just, again, just did not play a good basketball game tonight. So, you know, um, I, I, I guess... I, I can't say I'm cons- I'm not I'm not expecting Clay to get to the free throw line with any regularity. Uh, and Kyrie's no, but- always notoriously been a bad whistle guy. A bad, bad whistle guy. Just can't he, he just can't whistle. Him. You can't do it with the fingers can't. like Phil Jackson. I can't and either. Can't. I'm not. I can't whistle. You can't whistle at all. No, but it's always one of those things where I now now at my age, why would I learn how to whistle? Like that's one of those <laughs> things where I feel like you either learn how to do it early on or it just slips through the cracks. If you're watching on YouTube, comment below. Can you whistle? Can you not whistle? <laughs> also, comment below. Should I look up a YouTube tutorial like, you know, on how to whistle? Years old. Yeah, is that my thirty-year-old thing? Why does the <laughs> age? Why does the age thing matter to you? It just seems like one of those things. Like I'm, I don't know. I'm not gonna learn how to whistle <laughs> as I get older. I feel like you learn now. Well, you're also you don't have it. You're also a cat. You have a cat and not a dog. True. I just whistled and, w- and woke my dog up. If you I just heard him. Nope. <laughs> that guy yeah you, you got that but no whistling <laughs> i guess so but so you're not going to be a coach then because you don't have the, the phil jackson whistle you get a whistle a coach jason yeah. kid doesn't have a, a whistle on the sideline well i'm saying practice oh there you go okay no i'm just screaming <laughs> just like tom thibodeau and doc rivers just just ruin your vocal yeah. cords yeah absolutely <laughs> Coming up, let's get into the others. Why did the others start have such a, a hard time? Let's talk about Maxi Kleba and his injury. How does that affect things? We only made it two games in. And then the Mavs absolutely have to get something from one of these two players. We'll talk about who it is and more coming up. Shut it down! I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Today's episode of Lockdown Mavs brought to you by, oh, Game Time. I love Game Time because I like to go to things. I'm sure you like to go to things as well and like to go to comedy, concerts, theater, shows, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've gone to all those different things using Game Time because Game Time is an app that you can check out and you can look at all the different things that are available for you in your area. And then you get tickets to those places. Eagles at the Cowboys. Sunday, November 10th, $43. 43 bucks. Jazz at the Mavs on Monday. If you're listening to this early enough, $15. 15 bucks on game time. You can see the view from your seat. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, I can see the view from my seat. I can see all kinds of stuff. And then I toggle in that all in pricing. Oh, this is, what, this is where they get you. I see all the fees. Still $28 to get in the building. Uh, that's, the, that's the cheapest one on the all in pricing right there. So go check it out on FanDuel. And right now, if you do, uh, if you put down, uh, or if you you use the code locked on NBA L O C K E D O N N B A locked on NBA you get twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply create an account redeem that code locked on NBA download game time today what time is it it's game time shut it down oh, God. let's go home. all right slightly let's talk about let's do Maxi Kleba's injury first here Maxi Kleba goes down with it with an injury and he leaves the game they're calling it a hamstring injury. Is this just? Are we just going to go through this again, where Maxi's out for multiple weeks, and yes. then he comes, then he comes back, and all right, we're trying to integrate Maxi back again, and then he's out, and then we try this. Are we we're just going to go through the same cycle again? Yes, absolutely. That's just what. That's who he is. It's tough because we liked. I I did like seeing the two big lineup with Maxi in one of the centers. I like seeing the Maxi at the five lineup. Like Kid tried both of those things in this game tonight. And now they don't they don't have that. And they also just don't have a lot of fours. Like Najee Marshall playing the four yeah. makes this basketball team a different team than if he's playing the three and if you've got bigger guys at the, at the four there. Yeah, I mean, it definitely sucks. Like uh, Maxi for all of his flaws, for whatever everyone wants to say about him, is an important player for this team. And uh kid obviously loves him. I mean, Rick loved him. I mean, he's a player that a lot of teams would like to have, his type of archetype of a player. But he's just not somebody you can count on to be on the court. That's just been true, unfortunately for him, and unfortunately for the Mavs for quite some time. And it's it sucks because I would love for him to be healthy, but that's just not who he is as a player. And they've had their best stretches, twenty twenty two, and then the end of last season in the regular season. They've had their best stretches when he is available, right? Because yep. they have that versatility. So yeah, the Mavs will will 
Many of you Mavs fans will get to see what this team looks like without Maxi because I think that he may miss some time here, but he may not. So we'll see what happens with, with Maxi going forward. True, true. The the thing that the Mavs need really badly, they need one of these two players to do to do something. They need Hardy or Dinwiddie to get some buckets. They just need one more guy. Isaac and I were texting about this during the game. They need one more guy. And I thought that Dinwiddie was going to be the de facto because he's a veteran. He's been around before. He's played in kid's system. He, you know, I thought that, that, that kid would, would want to play him. Then in the preseason, didn't play that well. And I don't know if that was the deciding factor. But um, for a lot of Mavs fans, it was the deciding factor. Hardy gets the minutes. So you're okay with that. Hardy goes 0 for 4 in this game. Takes three kind of rushed threes in this game. And if you don't get any points from either of your two guards off the bench, like it's going to be a game like this. Cause in a game where you just have to like gut out points, just gut out isolation, go get a bucket somehow buckets. Like they, they need that from somebody else. They need one more guy to do it. And I think they need that from one of those two guys in that, in that spot. And they didn't get it at all tonight. Yeah. I mean, this is Hardy's not a consistent basketball player. So that's tough if you're relying on him for that and did what he's been bad for a year and a half. So I, that's, <laughs> If that is like going to be a very important thing for the Mavericks, then that's going to be a problem, and they're not going to be. I, I will say this: I, uh, I'm not this loss. I'm not jumping to too many conclusions off of it, but a lot's going to have to go right for the Mavericks to have the best offense in the league, which is a take I thought that I'd have, just because some of these players are so hot and cold, and when they're yeah. cold, it is bad, 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 bad. And Hardy's on that list. I mean, we, we haven't seen Denwood play any real minutes. PJ's uh, on PJ. that list. PJ, Najee apparently be no, Najee's on that. Well, I knew Najee was this because you don't bring in Najee for scoring. You bring him in for other no. things, and then scoring is an added caveat. I thought Najee's playmaking in game one was good when I went back and rewatched that game. I think his defense has been pretty solid so far. Everyone's jumping on the Najee stuff. I think give that about 20 games or so before we jump to real conclusions on that. Uh, PJ has to be better than he was tonight. That was bad. Just full stop. He has to play better. Yeah, than two that. for 10 from the field. Two of ten for the field, one of five from three, uh, and I thought he I thought he took pretty good shots. He, he did force some stuff, and there was just there's a really bad turnover where you just go well, like what what choice are you are you making there? It did feel like he was he was trying to force stuff. He looked around, he's like, all right, nobody else is trying to force anything. I will force something. I'm like, all right, that's a bad thing. Don't don't for, don't force that. Like, yeah, don't do that move. Uh, yeah, and then we got five minutes of Quentin Grimes. So that one apparently that that I you know he's falling down off the list so you're not gonna have any shooting out of there um we already talked about gafford and lively not really affecting this game definitely not scoring well, the ball can i say something real quick you when we say the bench stuff a big reason we're feeling that way tonight especially is because Kyrie was awful in this game there we go and it's Kyrie. one of the things of having Kyrie, and one of his responsibilities on this team is you stagger the minutes with luca and then Kyrie's kind of handling the team outside of luca and you know, saying Kyrie's awful tonight—that's not really fair because I thought he took good for shots. his standards. For for uh, he, he, shot making wise, it was a bad night for Kyrie. Uh, he took shots that usually you expect him to hit. You know, I thought he took some, and a big reason why the pick and roll game wasn't there was because it felt like the Mavs were not punishing, especially like Kyrie on those drops was not punishing right. the Suns. He had mid mid range pull up jumpers that he missed, pull up threes that he missed, and then for the second game in a row, just like uncharacteristic layups that he's missed and smoked that are like shocking. And then two, this was the surprising part for me. Cause I feel like we haven't seen this from Kyrie at all, but two frustration fouls in the backcourt. One of them, when the, yeah. when the Suns were in the bonus, when it was like, you're really trying to get, just find some momentum and get something going. You can't have a play like that. So I, this was a, you know, not a good basketball game from Kyrie Irving. And it, that's going to make the bench and everything else feel so much worse because of those lineups. Yeah, because it's all built around those two, like Luca and Kyrie being those being those two guys. And yeah, he had 22 points, but he shot 41 percent. He was a 50, 40, 90 guy last year. Uh, only took five threes, notable. He made both of them, but he only took five. And uh, yeah, he he's got to create more because if yeah, I, I'm feeling they're like, all right, you got to get one more guy going. But maybe Kyrie, if you give him, give me 10 more points, and then all of a sudden that's the one that's the one more guy. It's just him being up to up to Kyrie standards. If he's going to be the second star, you got to play like the second star. Yeah. And he, he got going a little bit in the fourth quarter, but it's just uh, early on. It's just, you know, we've had, we said this thing about Kyrie last year too. It's just give us something a little earlier in the game so we can get our feet wet and get, get the ball rolling <laughs> figuratively and literally. Yeah. He, so in the, in the third quarter, there was a stretch there 
Luka missed a wide open layup. Najee missed a wide open layup. Kyrie missed a wide open free throw jumper. Then Kyrie missed a layup in transition right under the rim. And that's, that was that's, the game. that's four buckets right there. Just like wide open. And at the end of that, uh, Kyrie hit like a nasty finish at the rim at the end of the, the third quarter. And it was 80 to, 80 to 91. You make all four of those, like literally wide open layups and a free throw line jumper. Like, I'm not saying, you, oh, these missed threes. No, like literally at the rim. You make all those, it is an 88 to 91 game at the end of the third quarter. Like, completely different. Yeah. yeah. It was one of those unbelievably frustrating games where there were oh. several sequences where it's like, we got to six. And then it was like, miss wide open three, miss wide open three, miss, miss this, transition. Miss that. Next thing you know, yeah. Next thing you know, it's like, oh, they, we're down the biggest we've been all game now, 15, <laughs> yeah, and now we got to dig our way out again. And it's just like, it just, it never felt at any point like the Mavericks were winning this game, like no. really at any point. No, you kind of feel it. Like having watched as many Mavericks games as we have, you kind of feel it watching this team going, all right, yeah, they're not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to win this game. They have times Still, where it's like, oh, they get, they get some stuff going that it was that tonight. Still feeling everything out. This team is there's yeah. the kid is still trying to figure out rotations. They were all over the place. We haven't gotten any rhythm. Uh, he tried the lively with the starters at times in this game. He you know ran with Gafford and the starters at the beginning of this game again, and so still trying to figure some stuff out. You felt that in this game. Couldn't get a rhythm, but the Mavs end up dropping this game. Thanks and everyone for hanging. Oh, go ahead. One more thing. Uh, That's right. That's right. Just a quick reminder for anyone feeling down, doom and gloom. Early season losses always hit a thousand times harder. They always do. I don't know. The finals want... games really hit me. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Playoff, playoff. I'm talking regular season. I don't know. You standard. Know, I can season... still, I can still feel that confetti hitting me like as I was doing the podcast <laughs> after Game Five. Yeah, I still remember the Game Three <laughs> oh. in the American Airlines Center. That was one of the most saddest I... <laughs> buildings I've ever been inside of. We went to the but chop shop. Season. We went to the chop shop bar like outside of the AAC after that. It was just like, oh, this is like. Everybody got was, divorced in here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it was very depressing. <laughs> it was just a couple beers, maybe feel better. I was like, all right, I need to leave. <laughs> all right, the night is young. Let's go. I need to leave or else I'm, my life, I feel like, I feel like there's a fork in the road moment in my life where if I stay and have a few beers with this crowd, it's just downhill. Like, this will be my life. But no, um, we love the job. I do. Genuinely Guys, like we job. should finally start that t-shirt business we've been talking about. And then all of a sudden, you're like, <laughs> you start a business. And so are you $40,000 in debt. Guys, dude, we should all go to the Grand Canyon. And you're like in a car and driving. Like, what? <laughs> how did I get here? Yeah. Terrible decisions would have been made then. That's, that's how it would end up here. But anyway, what I'm saying, though, is early season, <laughs> you know, this type of loss happens in like a January. And you're just kind of flushing it and moving on probably. But, you know, we'll see. This game, let's not forget, man. This team is a fundamentally new basketball team. Like it we is. talk about the Knicks need time, the Timberwolves need time, this team needs time. The Mavericks fit into that mold. Timberwolves you know? have like one new player, two new players. Well, I, yeah, but losing Cat, I feel like they're it's different. They're theirs is similar to the Mavericks, where like they have the same cast by and large, but they they're gonna play a different brand of basketball than they did. Yeah, right. No, it, it's different. Yeah, so. There you go. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us on Lockdown Mavs. Being part of this show, uh, check the QR code for ways that you can connect with us. You can become a Lockdown Mavs insider by getting texts from us. So you can subscribe to that and get texts on rumors and texts on Mavs news and updates and all kinds of extra content, things like that. You can also get our newsletter. Uh, so subscribe and follow. Click, that, uh, click all the links in the description or that QR code on the bottom of the screen. Guys, we'll be back on Monday. Me and Isaac breaking it down. Thanks so much for listening to Locked on Mavs. Peace out. Boom! The sun will come up tomorrow, Ugh. especially in Dallas, because it doesn't poor, rain anymore. Poor choice of words.